Carol, Salt Box Stitcher, back uh, for video number 48 on Sunday, June 27th. So, I have a few housekeeping things I want to do first. The first one is last time I did Scarlet House, and there was one that I had on another wall, and I just forgot to show you. And that is Anna Grader. Um, I'm not sure when I did this. It's been in the last couple of years, but this is Anna Grader by the Scarlet House. I love this border down here with the um, pinkish red. I think it's beautiful. It does have an eyelet alphabet. I think I did it on, it's a grayish, it's maybe tin roof, maybe cedar plank, I don't know, but it's a grayish uh, linen. And I, um, I don't, I want to say I did it probably three or four years ago. I don't know how long this, I didn't get out the pattern, but this is Anna Grader, another Scarlet House that I wanted to show you. And then a couple of videos ago, somebody asked me to show Eliza Mitchell framed by Lottie Da. I had it on another wall. I've shown it before, Eliza Mitchell by Lottie Da, reproduction sampler. It about drove me to drink. This has a lot of over one. It's just got a lot of tedious stitching. I did it on 40 count weeks something with the called for silks. There's a teeny, teeny bit of red, reddish in this middle border. Other than that, it's all kind of neutral colors. Oh, a little bit up here too. The bouquets are gorgeous. They could be standalone or the pot of flowers, whatever. So um, that somebody had asked me to show. So I wanted to make sure that I did that. Okay, now let's talk about my finishes. The first one was I finished and I told you I was gonna count each one of these as a finish. So this is the Parlor Series by Shakespeare's Peddler. Jenny Bean for the Parlor. There's eight parts all together. A couple videos ago, I showed the patterns. Shakespeare's Peddler is also known as Kitten Stitcher and she has an online store. You can get these from her. So I did finish and this is a long, takes a long, narrow piece. By the time you stitch all eight of them, it's going to be really big. So I did finish that top part. And I'm calling each one of these as I finish them a finish. So that would be finish number one. Okay. And this is on 36 count Wren with the called for over dyed cottons. Each one has um, different threads. I think these threads are actually for one and number one and number two. Because I have a blue green in here, a blue and a blue green in here. And I know that's for the um, next one. And the next one, part two, is. Hold, please this one, Adam and Eve. So that's part two, and I'll get back to that fairly soon, hopefully. So that was my first finish. My second finish, I finally deleted the post on Instagram because it was such a fail. <laughs> I tried to post this. So I took a picture first, and then, oh, I don't even know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong. But this is Ann Topley by The Scarlet House. It's nice, small sampler, very colorful. Does have an eyelet alphabet and an eyelet band. Some of the colors are a little ghosty, but I like it because it still is very colorful. And this is the chart. I stitched this on a piece. 
It says 18th century blackbird by r and R. I know there's also an 18th century rook, but I think this is the blackbird. So it's an r and R color. And I use the over dyed cottons with the exception of, it calls for gentle art, soot, suit, S-O-O-T, soot is how I would say it. And I substituted Weeks blue jeans. So this blue here is Weeks blue jeans. Same with the name in Tupley. The lighting makes it kind of even more ghosty. So that was finish number two. So nice to cross those off my whip pile. The next one, and I know the buttons are going to fall. I did not sew the buttons on this. This is uh, gathering together as friends. This is our retreat piece from Silver Needle. This is a first <laughs> to get a chart at a retreat and finish it within two weeks is like, I've never done that. So anyway, it fits in. It's, this is what it looks like. This is the fabric on the back, which is sewing type fabric. This was all part of the kit from the retreat. My finishing isn't the greatest, but, and then it fits in this tray second here with the buttons that we were also given at the retreat. Now, <clears throat> you can see where this is a cross stitch image of a button. You could also have sewn buttons on if you would have preferred, but I decided I, I would rather stitch them and then just lay some buttons inside there. So that's what I'm doing. So, FFO, <laughs> who'd, who'd have thunk? Anyway, okay. Um, this was the pattern. I showed you this last week. The fabric for that was 36 count Wren. This is the chart. This is what we got together. What we got together, I'm just reading. <laughs> what we got at the retreat. And again, these were the colors on this adorable floss card. Same colors are used for the other part of the retreat kit, which is this. And I haven't started on any of that. I think I'd like to do the smalls before I do the sampler. Although I really like the sampler. I might start the sampler and then kind of in between do the smalls because that's a lot of letters. I don't mind doing letters, but when you do that many, it can get a little bit monotonous. And the only, oh, two other things that I've been working on. Hold, please. I was just bound to have something fall. Okay, let's see here. I have so many chairs around me full of quilting stuff. And I have one small chair for cross stitch stuff. And it's all falling off. Um, the other thing I've been working on, because I really haven't shown you other than some of the things I showed on the last video, but I really haven't shown you a lot of other stuff. But this is um, Mary Good by Sassafras Samplers, which is Sassy Jacks. I think this is an exclusive to them. So if you're interested in it, contact Sassy Jacks. And this is my progress on it. So I've done all the lettering. There's no over one. I've done the tree, working on some other motifs, but from here on out, it's pretty much all motifs. I'm stitching this. I got a kit from Sassy Jack's 40 count parchment, which is the Zweigart base, because it has the orange stripe by weeks. 
Oops, let me show you the whole thing. I have a lot of extra fabric that I'll cut off, but for some reason I haven't done it yet. So that's where I am on Mary Good. And I'm using the Verisoi colors. And yes, that's a pretty Pepto Bismol Adam and Eve. <laughs> so, okay. Very good. The only other thing I've worked on, and I worked on this stitch folk bag. Don't ask me how I was lucky enough to push play and push play, push the button at the right time, but somehow I was. So I have one. This has come into my garden by Blackbird. Now, I originally got this in 2019 at the Stitch Camp um, retreat in country, at Country Sampler in Spring Green. When Barb gave out the pattern, she had not finished the model. So the picture is unfinished, but she they have since released this. And so if you buy a chart, it will have the picture finished. I started this first weekend in June, Blackbird. Stitch along Sal, Brendan, Laura. And this is where I am on this one. So I've done some of the letters, few motifs on the, the border um, outline is finished, working on the letters. And then I jumped down to the top of the house, the roof. Or as I said it when I was growing up, roof. But my husband says roof, and so I ended up saying roof. And these are the, what I call, and you'll see a lot of what I'm gonna show you later, blackbird colors. They're soft, but muted, is how I describe blackbird colors, so. And then I have a couple things I got in the mail. Um, I got this chart, Erica Michaels, Nancy Alden. This, they had a model at Silver Needle and I really, really loved it, but they were out of the chart, so I ordered it. Um, I believe that I'm going to do this version here, the Lord's Prayer, so that I don't have to do all this over one because that would drive me into insanity. So instead, I'm going to do just the Lord's Prayer over two. So it won't look quite like that, but I love this bird. It's kind of a funky bird. The alphabets, the flowers here, I just really think that's pretty. So anyway, I don't know. I have any idea when I would start that, but hopefully at some point in time, I will. And then I got two pieces of linen um, in the mail. I'm in the Exjude, uh, it's called the Neutral Fat Half Club. And this one, I really like it. It's, it is kind of a or little bit orangey. And so, but it's a beautiful color. Kind of a dusky orange. So I thought, you know, what would I use this for? So I pulled out a couple, charts that I actually thought would be perfect for it. This is the first one. These are the charts I had in my, my stash. This is the Ruby Owl sampler. And this has that same sort of feel as far as the color of the linen. This is by Plum Street. Ruby Owl's sampler. I love that. So that may be something that I want to kit the colors. The other thing I pulled because I thought it might be a good option. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to take put the colors on this, but this is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Barrick. Um, And I thought, you know, that might be a great piece to put 
on that linen. And the linen is a fat half, uh, 40 count. So 21 by 13 and a half if it's done on 40 count. And then this one is, um, well, it doesn't have the size, but it's 180 by 172. So that would be nine by eight and a half by nine. So I think they both would fit on a fat half is my point. So I, I just might, I'm not ready for Halloween or fall stitching yet. It's not even 4th of July, although my next video will be after 4th of July. But trust me, I'm not ready for Halloween or fall yet, yet. And then I got one more piece of linen and this is the um, club I'm in from Traditional Stitches in Canada. And this one is, uh, it's a lakeside linen club. It's a fat quarter club. And this is straw flower in the 40 count. So that just came yesterday. And 18 minutes of cross stitch. That's all I have. What am I going to be working on? I don't know. Probably Mary Good. I'm going to keep working on Mary Good, I believe. So, so if you're just here for the cross stitch, that's all I have. And um, I will be back in two weeks, and hopefully I'll have a little more to show you on cross-stitch. But it's only been a week, and I have finishes, so <laughs> got to give me credit for all that. So anyway, if you're just here for the cross-stitch, toodles, love you, bye. Okay, I, I really don't know where to start <laughs> with all this. But um, as far as the quilting, let me just say... If you don't follow Lori, textilist, and also Olivia B, they are, um, well, Olivia B is a fairly new quilter, but she's already proficient. Um, Nicole's another one that's a fairly new quilter, Nicole's Needlework, that is very proficient. So, um, Tech stylist is Lori, and she's like I am. She's been quilting for many, many, many years. So a little history. I made my first quilt, well, other than piecing quilts when I was a kid, because my grandmother used to quilt. But when I really first made my first quilt on my own was in 1981. We lived in Kansas City. I wasn't married. And fairly close to where I was living, there was a little quilt shop and they offered classes. And back then the classes were like, I don't know, 12 weeks and you made a quilt start to finish. It was a sampler quilt so that you learned applique, you learned piecing, you learned Y seams, you just learned it all. You cut out templates and everything was hand pieced and hand quilted. So, I took the class in the early spring and I finished the quilt completely in the fall. So eight, nine months it took me to complete a sampler quilt. It's queen size. One of these days I'll get it out and show you. I don't have it out anymore because it's so old. I mean, it's 40 years old. And I use like a, a medium um, colored muslin and it just has there's been some deterioration plus I was so stupid to put it on a bed and it got a lot of sun fading so um one of these days I'll show it to you but it's it's old it's getting a little bit I won't say ragged it's just not one that I have out at all so from there I kind of took off and started doing a lot more quilting but until rotary cutting came out, it was, you know, a long, tedious process. By the time you hand quilt or hand pieced by cutting out templates and hand hand pieced and hand appliqued and hand quilted. So a lot of the ways, now I don't hand piece anymore. No, and the only templates I use anymore are strictly for applique, but, um, Rotary cutting just changed the world of quilting. And so things are much different now than they were at the time. All that to say, in 1988, we moved to Florida. And I know that because my daughters were in 86 and she was two when we moved. 
But shortly before we moved, there was a shop that had not been open too, too long called the Salt Box Sampler. It was my very favorite shop in the whole entire world. It was a small store. They had quilting fabric, they had cross stitch. They offered classes and lots of different things, chalkware, toll painting, um, quilting, cross stitch, folk art painting, you name it. It was just the gamut. And um, the person that I used to see a lot and talk to was Alma Allen. Now this is way before Blackbird became Blackbird. And if you ever go to one of their retreats and people will ask, how did you all get started? You know, what was, when did you meet up, etc. Because Barb was a cross stitcher, she used to come into the store. And because Alma was a quilter, she was, and she taught quilting at this store, she would continually tell Barb that she needed to quilt. And Barb was like, no, no, I'm just a cross stitcher. I don't have any desire to, um, to quilt. I'm gonna take a short pause here because the doorbell just rang. So anyway, Alma was continually um, urging Barb to take a quilt class. When she finally decided to take a quilt class, Alma says she was so impressed with Barb's colors because she had such a good eye for colors and unique combinations, etc. So that's kind of how they met and they became friends and they started Blackbird Designs. So um, all this to say, Textilist and Lori and Olivia B have decided to start a BBDQAL. So it's Blackbird Designs Quilt Along. And if you watch um, Olivia's most recent Quilty Tube or BBDQAL, she does a flip through of some of the Blackbird quilting books. Now, these are primarily quilting books, although there are some cross stitch designs, rug hooking designs, etc. So you get a little bit of both, but they are not what I would call cross stitch books at all. So if you're just looking for Blackbird cross stitch books and you come across one of these, you may want to get it, but it's gonna have limited cross stitch. So in an effort to do this video, this is for you, Lori. <laughs> and at some point I'm hoping to do a tutorial on how I do hand applique because I do it kind of the old fashioned way. I'm a needle turn applique. I use freezer paper templates and that's how I do it. Also, because I love to do hand applique, I have done a lot of Jan Paddock. Now Jan Paddock designs for Moda and she does primitive applique. You can still find her YouTube tutorials on how to do um, hand applique the way, and that's the way I do it. I do it like Jan Paddock, old school. Um, I don't have any desire to do it any other way because that's how I do it. But I've done quite a few, when I say quite a few, you know, a hand applique quilt can take a long time because you're doing it by hand. So I think I have about six Jan Paddock quilts that I've done, more kitted. I have uh, three, I think at least, country threads. They were another group of two gals that designed um, quilts. They're no long, they no longer have a store, although I think they still put out some books occasionally. And then I have done a few Blackbird. So Blackbird has not been the one that I've done the most of, although I have every book that I know of that they've put out. So I'm gonna do a run through of the books. And if I have done the quilt or if I have it kitted, I'm gonna do my best to show you. Now, all that to say, I am, please don't take this as bragging. I'm old. <laughs> And while Blackbird was in the up and coming part of their business, putting out lines of fabric with Moda and lots of books, I worked at quilt shops. I worked eight years at one quilt store here in Jacksonville. 
And then I, another gal opened a quilt stop store that was going to be more primitive. And so I then worked at that store for eight years. So I had access to every line, whatever our store did not get in. in the way of books, I ordered from the Liberty Quilt Shop in Liberty, Missouri. Now that store has long since closed. The, quilt, the primitive quilt store that I worked at here in Jacksonville has closed. So some of those quilt stores have short, have had shorter, short-term lives, I guess you'd say. So, um, but I, just at the time, I had access to get all this. If you're going to go back now and try to find all these, it's going to be more difficult. And I appreciate that when Olivia did her flip through of some of the um, quilt books, she made it you know, obvious, or if she knew, she told people, you can buy this on Amazon, this is available on Etsy, this, you might have to search eBay, whatever. I did not do that. I'm just gonna show you what I have. And I'm pretty sure I have most all of the quilt books, I think. Oh, my nose itches. Why does that always happen? So anyway, you ready? The other thing too, that you kind of have to keep in mind, and I have a lot of Blackbird fabric. I just do. I worked at the quilt shop. I also went to market sometimes with the owners and the night before market opens, there's what's called sampler, sample spree and all you can, you know, stores can come in and get fat quarter bundles, whatever they're at cost. And I, I was able to get things like that. So, I, I guess you could just say I was in the right place at the right time. And we all have history of what we've done. You know, when I see all those beautiful Hardanger and all those ones that um, Brenda has done, I'm just amazed. Because I didn't, you know, I did some cross stitch back that time period, but I wasn't like prolific like that. Instead, I was quilting. So, you know, we all have a past. <laughs> like it or not, we all have a past. So, um... I went through these in my best estimation of what the copyright says on when these books came out. Keep in mind, the first few Blackbird books were kind of self-published, and so there's a lot of black and white. Then they did some with Pickle Dish Quilts, which is the Kansas City Star Quilt Company. Kansas City Star, the newspaper, used to publish um, some of their, their quilting. So... Without further ado, I'm going to show you and I just hope things don't crash. If we have crashes, we have problems. So all that to say, I do have a lot of Blackbird fabric. Uh, a lot of bundles. There's probably more than I will ever use, but <laughs> I have it for now. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the threads books. If you're not aware of these, these were put out by Needle Love, Renee Nanneman, and they are collections almost of various designers. So there's Maggie Bononomy. This is one of her pieces. There's Renee Nanneman. There's um, there's a lot of different people. And I think, and Renee Nanneman was from St. Louis, but I, I'm thinking at one point she lived in Kansas City. So a lot of these designers are kind of from around Missouri, Kansas City area. Jan Paddock, the Blackbird Girls, um, Maggie Bononomy lives you know, middle of Missouri. So a lot of these people collaborated, I guess is the word, um, in these threads books. And there's, there's all kinds of threads books. So prior to Blackbird starting their own books, there were some, some of these threads books, threads books, that they contributed to. So for example, this particular quilt is done by Alma of Blackbird. So 
the, some of these are, I think, still available. And there were a lot of them. I think the back here, look at all of them. And they were seasonal. You know, you had Old Glory threads, Strawberry threads, Easter threads, Haunted threads. But they all had that name, threads. So if you're looking for primitive style or that kind of thing, that might be another place to, to go. Um, so the first thing I have, <clears throat> I put the dates on here with a post-it note. This isn't Blackbird, but this was put out by Jan Paddock and Alma. So they work together. This is Baskets, Berries, and Leaves. Um, this was a block of the month. And each one, this, it had the fabrics. I think, I'm not sure where I got this, but like a lot of the fabrics that are used are here. I may have gotten this from um, the Liber Liberty Quilt Shop. And then you have the, diff the various blocks. And it's just in the one colorway. And yes, I have it kitted with the original fabrics. So call me crazy. Did you already? <laughs> so that's 2008. So that's the first time, other than some of these threads books that I that I have found, where I found either Barb or Alma's name. So I'm thinking. These were the first. I think Nuts and Berries was the very first. This one came out in 1999. And um, this quilt here, Pumpkin Berries. Um, I'm, there's, a, there's pieced quilts in here too, but I'm gonna try to just show you a few things rather than a flip through. So you have this one, there's a lot of applique. There's a lot of combination pieces. And a lot of times you'll also see the name Leona Adams, and that was Barb's mom. She passed away a few years ago, but she contributed a lot. I might be wrong, this was uh, Liberty Quilt Shop, but this is dated 1999. And um, it just talks, when it goes through the credits, you know, it talks a lot about, you know, thanking different people for their uh, contribution to these books. Also in 1999 were the series of Christmas memories. And I've seen people um, covet these books. There's, it's a four part series. So this is the first one. This is the full quilt. I'm sorry for the glare. That ring light's not being my friend today. So Christmas memories. These, all of these are necessary to make this quilt. So here it is. A little bit better picture than here. Actually, this may be different. Yeah, this one's, di the one on the bed's different it has that ticking and some a um, little bit more pieced blocks. So there's versions you can make. So all together, so that I showed you one, this is two, this is three, the pretty log cabin one with the white snowflakes applique. And this is four. Now, at this point, they were not 
to my knowledge, putting out fabric yet. But this is, um, this one was designed by Barb, but of course it's under both their names. So that's $19.99. And this next set of three books is one that's highly coveted. And this is one that I recently posted um, on Instagram that I have drawn the templates for this version. I'm going to, and I have the dark red. There's actually two fabrics. One is for the sashing and the other is for the blocks. You can kind of tell that it's a little bit um, buried in color. It's gorgeous, and this is the one that I'm going to be making, and I've already cut out the templates. I'm still ironing the templates to the different fabrics. So um, this one is block one. So there's three books. So here's one beautiful rug. This is two. And see, there's like, this is some, um, I think that's embroidery. Some wool. And this is three. And you can see the lighter version of the quilt, which is also on the back of one. It's the same quilt. Um, this is actually done by Cherie Ralston. And Cherie lives, um, I think she lives in Lawrence, but she contributed a lot. She did actually put out some of her own books too. Lawrence, Kansas, which is close to Kansas City. So there's different versions. This is Alma's version, and that's the one I'm interested in doing. So this samples from the past came out in 2000, and there's three parts. Blackbird Designs. Also, that's also highly coveted. The next one I have also came out in 2000. And this one is called Cozy Nights. Um, here's one of the feature things. This is a night in the country, which is a pieced a version of a pineapple block. This one is gorgeous, a winter's nap. And the interesting thing, you know, so many times when you do a background of an applique, you know, you would use something that's, you know, fairly neutral, but they weren't afraid to really be bold and put a big floral for the background. And it, it just works. They're just very, both of them are extremely, extremely um, talented. This quilt I actually made, this basket one, and gave to a friend when she moved. I made it in pretty much those same colors. I've always wanted to make it again for myself, but I haven't done it. That particular one is called Dreaming in the Garden. And they did a lot of embroidery. I know Susan Aki, Yard Girl, she picked some of their um, embroidery patterns and did them because she was really, in fact, I have two quilts that Susan has made me out of Blackbird fabric. Um, there was one other one I wanted to show you. Just, I mean, really interesting color choices, but still what I would call in the primitive slash muted version and there's all you know frequently rugs so this one is called cozy nights and this one came out in 2000 but like this is a cross is cross stitch and this both cross stitch so see they they always added some cross stitch and you know their displays or staging whatever you want to call it is just gorgeous i mean look at this 
This makes you want to move your bed out in the outside, right? <laughs> this one, this is what really sold me on making that quilt for my friend. That was a labor of love, I guess. So that came out in 2000. There's 45 books all, the, all together here. So I'm sorry, but we're gonna be here a while. You can watch it obviously in stages. This one, another one that came out in 2000, Fresh From the Garden. See, and some of these, I, I bought at different ones, but some of them have the price tag from um, Liberty Quilt Shop, so I know I got them from there. Just different colors, you know, like the back of this. Now here's cross stitch with wool. I mean, they were doing this, you know, 20 years ago. Embroidery, wool applique. Here's a blast from the past. Look at that picture of all those different people that contributed. Oops. So here's Barb and here's Alma. I don't know if they watch my videos. But it's like bees in the garden. Lots of applique. Now look at this. How ingenious is this? Here's cross stitch, wool applique, and it's all on a piece of fabric that's got a pretty bold print. Monochromatic, but a pretty bold print. I mean, it's just gorgeous. They just, you know, they just take things to another level. The cherry garland, I always like this one. I thought it was so pretty. I'm gonna try to go faster because I know I made this one, the piece one. I gave that to somebody, but I'm not sure. We used to do exchanges, the quilt shops that I worked at. Twice a year we did exchanges. So you had somebody's name and then you made a quilt. Here's another one. This is called Blackbird on Vacation. This is another quilt I made. This is on the back. I don't even know where that is. I don't think I made it that big though. I think I made like six or nine squares. Here's another where they did cross stitch wool and then on a bold, mounted to a kind of a bold um, fabric. Rugs, you know, journaling. Here's a wool bag. So that, all 2000. The next one is a series again. There's four parts. This is called the Tulip Farm. I used to have this kitted, but for some reason I think I unkitted it. There's a better picture, or maybe that's the same picture. Okay, so this is part one, but there's also other quilts. This is 2001. Here again, here's that whole idea. I don't know if that's actually cross, I think it's cross stitch fabric and then wool applique. I mean, it just, this is why these books are timeless. You know, applique on a sweatshirt. There's other designs in here, but I just, I feel like I'm gonna bore you if I go through all of them. Here's part four, Tulip Farm. Look at that wool penny, wool mat. Look at that rug. This fabulous. I mean, wouldn't we all like to have that hanging in our house in the spring? I love this perspective, this house and this flower. <laughs> oh, I think my neighbors would be wondering a little bit if I had a flower that big. Okay, this is one that, this is for you, Lori. Um, this is one I want to talk about a little bit. This is Warm Hearts, okay? This I do have kitted. I think I've done a block, but I don't know. Maybe I've just drawn it out. I don't know. Here's this quilt. Okay, I want you to look closely at this fabric for the backing. 
And there are all these urns with flowers, the birds. So, this is the fabric that that's done on. But since they're so ingenious, I know I've done a block of this, but I can't, I don't know where it is. They use the back side of the fabric. So this is like a ticking fabric and they use the back side or the wrong side for their background to get a more muted look. Here's the front, here's the back. And this is not the only time they did that. I'll show you another quilt that they did that. See, I know I've done part of this because I have part of this drawn out. So I'll just have to find what I did with it. I know I have at least one block done. And then the way they did this here, but yeah, that's the same ticking fabric. Now, I don't know where the, that ticking fabric came from. Um, meaning, I don't know if it was a Moda um, fabric. I don't know. Did I don't know if somebody went through this or not, this book. Did, I don't know if Olivia B. or maybe. Look at this. Here you have all those browns, tans, rusts, and then they throw this really bright, kind of a bright blue in there. It's just genius. Look at this one. Do I want to applique all that holly, ivy, and snowflakes? No, nope. but it's beautiful. Even just this part would be beautiful. So anyway, this one is Warm Hearts, and this is the main quilt. And it's done on a bright ticking on the wrong side. This also came out in 2001. So here, how prolific to do, whoops, the Tulip Farm and that other one. Now I know for a fact, because I've talked to Barb about it, um, Okay, part of the dilemma working in the quilt shop is that the books did not come out at the same time as the fabric. So, you know, unless you have sneak peeks with the designer, you can call them up and say, hey, Barb, hi, hey, Alma, what's your next book gonna, you know, what, is it gonna have applique? What's the yardage I need to buy? So here was always my theory, and this is why I have so much Blackbird fabric. When the fabric landed, especially the sampler fabric, it was frenzy time. So I would always get a, uh, a fat quarter bundle. I would get at least six yards for the back. You could always add to it, but six yards for the back. And then I would get maybe three yards for a border. And then if I thought maybe they might use it for applique, I'd get two to four yards for the backgrounds of the applique because depending on if the blocks are 20 inches or whether they're 36 inches, you're either gonna need, you know, two to four yards of some backgrounds. So I bought a lot of yardage <laughs> and I never took home a paycheck. I owed the store every, every single paycheck. Okay, the next one, and I've shown, I've showed this pieces of this before. So let me take a little bit of time with this one. This one is called Summer Weekend. Um, I bought this at the Liberty Quilt Shop and this came out in 2001. Also, so we have Warm Hearts, Tulip Farm, and this one. And here's where I am on this one. Okay, and I've seen this. At, mine is autographed, isn't that sweet? 2001. Sometimes Barb will write to my best friend, which she tells everybody, of course. So this is the quilt, and this was a class I took at the Liberty Gathering. The Liberty Gathering was in Liberty, Missouri, and it was all these wonderful designers. You signed up for classes, you got your own meals, you got your own, no, some of the meals were provided, but you got your own lodging, and it was like four, four days, 
fabulous. I was talking to a gal named Barb at Silver Needle at the retreat. There were no other retreats like this. The presentations, they had auctions where designers had made things and they, their own pieces, and then they auctioned them off. There were presentations from R&R &R on all their samplers. There was, it was just unbelievable, the Liberty Gathering. Nobody has ever done it since. It was put on by um, three different shops. The Liberty Quilt Shop, which was right in the same building as the Old Mill Stitchery. And then there was also a wool store and a tea room, by the way. The food, it was, there was nothing like it. And Liberty is a college town. So there was a lot of access to buildings and classroom space. I think a couple of years, the classes were all at a church that you could just, it was like, and you could go visit the jail where Jesse, Jesse, Jesse James, is that his? Yeah, where he was in jail. Anyway, this is the quilt that I'm still in the process. And this one came out also in 2001. So I have parts of this done. I've showed it before, but I'll show it again. I also am working on this wool mat. So that's called Summer Weekend. Here's where I am on my wool mat. And this is also a kit that I got when I was at the gathering. Beautiful. And please don't tell me I don't have my pieces in here. Oh shoot, I don't. together. Oh yeah, I do. I was going to say, if I don't, I'm in trouble. So I have various parts of this finished. This is the next block that I'm appliquing. Well, these are the eagles that go around the sides. This is the flag. This is one of the blocks. And this is all on the same fabric that they used for the model. Another one of the blocks. Where's my house? Here it is. Templates drawn for the border. And why, pray tell us, it's not finished. Because like everything else, it takes time. Here's the house. So I, I have most of the pieces. I just need to work on the borders. And um, I think there's one more block that I need to finish. Um, so I've done this, I've done this, 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 I think. I have the stars, I have this. I have this three eagle to do, and then I have to do the border. So I, I'm close, but not there yet. Let me see, I need to, oops, <laughs> just in case there's some pieces. The sun keeps going behind clouds, so I hope that's not too obnoxious with the lighting. <laughs> They're going to have to get a helicopter to move me up out of the space because it's all around them. I have to jump over. This came out in 2002. This is one of those ones by the Kansas City Star. This is called Celebration of American Life. And
if you originally got the mat, the newspaper, can't see star, you could get the patterns, but this is the one I'm making. Here's the other version of it. Now there's a, this, I'm not gonna do a um, flip through like um, Olivia did, but here's patriotism. And I want you to note again, look at the background of this. Hold on. So here's my first block that I have finished. And again, it's a ticking fabric that they're using the wrong side. How cool is that? So that came out in 2002. Looks like I still have some berries to stitch down on that. And when I originally got it, I went ahead and bought the book, but I had it kitted from Liberty Quilt Shop block by block. And it's not near that bright, it's a gold. So I have all of them. I have my blocks cut and I have all the kits. The blocks are smaller and it actually is, um, it's a little bit tedious because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of applique in a small space. This is another reason why I'm not a fan of using any kind of like freezer paper or interfacing because so many times things are layered and I just don't want all those thicknesses on my quilt. It's just me. Okay, moving on. This came out in 2002 as well. And this one is called Higdon Camp. I think Lori showed this one. See, here's more of that ticking type fabric. So I, I'm pretty sure this, those were Moda tickings. Not, I can't swear to it, but this is the one I'd love to do. That's fabulous. Even if you just did the middle and, you know, one set of uh, flowers around it, be beautiful. 2002 Higdon Camp, and this one has been, other people have shown this one, so I won't go into as much detail. But how fun is this? A ticking fabric, and then, what did they used to call that? Stack and whack or something like that, where you're using the same block and just arranging the fabrics differently. Pretty wonderful. So that also was 2002. I better hustle through this. This is gonna to get to be way too long. Okay, this one came out in 2003. And this is the one that I have finished, the one that's on the front. And this one is called Fresh from the, or Friendship's Garden. Let me see if I can find the pictures real quick. This is the one I did, but I haven't quilted it yet. Why you ask? Well, that's a really good question. 
I don't really want to answer it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and then here's a couple other versions. And somewhere in this book, it talks about how popular that um, the samples from the past, the three, set of three books, it was very popular. So this was kind of like an answer to reprinting those. Yeah, Cherie and I did a series of booklets a couple years ago called Samples from the Past. I showed you that one that I'm doing on the dark red fabric. It was so successful, we thought we might do another project together. So it's got the same feel. So if you love samples from the past, but haven't been able to find it. I chose to do this one. So I have shown this on my Instagram. This, this came out in 2003. I used this, I was fortunate enough, I don't know how I got a kit, whatever. I used the same fabrics they did. It's all hand applique. I mean, obviously it's the, everything is pieced. The blocks and the border. I think my delay in quilting it is, I really would like to custom quilt it, but it takes me a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time. So here's, those corner ones. Let's see. It's kind of hard to show a quilt. There's one block. I won't show you all the blocks. There's another block. Let me show you the center one because that's kind of fun. It'll be July by the time this gets uploaded. So there's the center block. Can you see it? With the pot. So I need to, I need to quilt this and get it done. It's pretty big. It's the nine blocks and each block is, I want to say it's about 18 or 20 inches. A lot of reds and blues. This is not necessarily their lines of fabric, though, I don't think. But there's two background fabrics. There's the print, and then there's the stripe. You can see that. Okay. So that's from Friendship's Garden. I'm going to go quickly, because now I'm getting into where it's like... A lot of time. This is 2003 Lavina's Pressed Flowers. And I love the embroidered pillow on the back. Now, how interesting is this? All wool. It's called Bright Bouquet. This is Here's two that I want to show you. I don't know if anybody showed this yet, but this was a line of fabric, Lavina's Pressed Flowers. Look at that. Now that's an undertaking. And then also, I just love this yo-yo coverlet or whatever you want to call that. It's not really a quilt. I know the sheets. I'm telling you, over the top. Over the top. And the wool was moda, moda wool, because I remember, I think I have a bundle of it somewhere. It wasn't um, felted wool. I love this one. Just love it. It's soft, but that's very Blackbird to me. Here's another one that was put out by the Kansas City Star, Women of Grace and Charm. Love this one. This is a quilting tribute to the women who ser served in World War II. Oops. Just fabulous. I think I started to say that I was talking to Barb one time 
And because the fabric does not always come out at the same time as the book, they were always frequently under a deadline to get their quilts done. So what they would do was the freezer paper method where you iron the freezer paper to the wrong side, you, you cut a freezer paper template, you iron it to the wrong side of your um, applique piece, you cut it quarter inch larger, then you glue your seam allowance in, then you remove, no, then you put it onto your background piece and you use a um, either a blind hem or a buttonhole stitch, blanket stitch on the sewing machine. And a lot of times they used invisible thread, which is a pain to work with. And then they would use like a um, a stitch to go around each piece, and that way it was quicker. Then they went to the back of the background fabric, cut a hole and pulled out the freezer paper. So the freezer paper did not get left in the quilt. But this is a fabulous one too. You know, each block is just really cool. That's actually a pieced star, but. So this one also came out in 2003, you know, because they, I mean, they used to release a lot of times a new new one at every um, quilt market. But, you know, they did interesting things, too. Like, here's a crocheted placemat of a flag. I wouldn't have thought of that, would you? Another 2003, because, you know, like I said, it had to have multiples in a year. Um... And keep in mind, there are some occasional, um, like here's a great pieced quilt with the baskets. Of course, it's red, so I'm attracted to it because it's beautiful. Brick rack baskets. And the handles are rick rack. Aunt Dorothy's Picnic Baskets was the name of that one. So that was another one in 2003. This is 2004. I think somebody has shown this. Maybe um, Olivia showed this one. Because I think I remember her showing that. I think I made this. I think I gave it as a gift. This is Under the Stars. I'm not sure if I did the border, but I for sure I remember doing the pieced. This is cool. They did a lot of patriotic, just a variety. Look at this one. Holly and berries. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Olivia showed this one. That was 2004. This is... 2004 again, Ella's Home Place. There's a cross stitch on the back. Look at this heart pillow with wool. The one I really like in here is bas baskets. This is a little manic for me. <laughs> it's pretty, but it's a little manic. <laughs> the one I want to show you. Oops, where'd it go? Hiding. This one. Ma'am's Gathering Basket. I love that. With all the baskets and then those Dresdens in between and on the border. Fabulous. So see, the books would come out afterwards and then you'd be like, I want to make it just like that, and there's no no more of those fabrics. This one is called Garden Magic, and I'm pretty sure that was the name of the line. 
this one I made for Susan Aki. This one, I didn't make it, but. And at the same time, Susan was really into doing scallop borders for a while. When I say Susan, I mean Yard Girl. 2004, and then this was the free pattern. <laughs> it's a little dog-eared that came out from Moda. See, we'd always get one of these free patterns that came out at the time the fabric came out. So I have a whole bag of a lot of those fabrics. Plus I have bundles. You all wanna be in my will? <laughs> yes, please. Some of this fabric's old, but you know, I mean, we still have fabric from the Egyptians. <laughs> How many years ago was that? So, This is Quilting in the Garden, again, 2004. This was another Kansas City Star book. I'm pretty sure this is one Olivia showed. So make sure you go to Olivia B's BBD QAL. I think she did a flip through on this one, I'm pretty sure. So I won't go into that one. This is Sweet Romance. This again was some of the same colors as that Garden Magic. So this was kind of a pink and yellow and green phase. This is just a small little book. This was 2005. Here's another Kansas City Star book. This was also 2005. All those houses. This is another one that Olivia showed, I'm pretty sure. I, think I remember her talking about all the houses. Yeah, because she named, I mean, she went through all the names. So go to Olivia B's if you want to flip through of that home sweet home. This also came out, um, Welcome Home. This was 2005. I had that kitted for a while and then I decided I would never do all those leaves, so. No, thank you. This one came out in October 2006 of American Patchwork and Quilting, issue number 82, 2006. And this looks very similar to the one that is, I think, um, Lori showed that there's a free pattern out. So this came out in 2006, American Patchwork and Quilting with those nosegays. It's just gorgeous. And if I don't keep the magazine open, I won't remember. And that one. Let me see what I did with it. I have stuff everywhere, so. Oh, here it is. Is that it? No. <laughs> I had it. Anyway, I have it kitted. Of course you do, Carol. I think this might be it. It's not as orange as you might think. It's really more red. It's beautiful. Yep, there's more of that. Sampler fabric. I don't know if my fabrics are exactly the same, but mostly they are as that. Let's see what this is from. Summer weekend. Oh, here's another one. Let me just show that real quick. Going back to that summer weekend one. I hope you'll stay with me through this because I know I'm a little disjointed. It's just really hard to show all of this stuff. Well, did I show it down? Yep, here it is. It 
didn't think this was from summer week. Yes, here it is. This one, this was a kit from the Liberty Quilt Shop. And here's all the fabric for that, including the plaid border. And I cleaned my sewing room, so maybe in the near future I might do a tour of my sewing room, so. Sorry, I didn't show that before. Okay, did I show this yet? Sweet Summer has a hexi quilt. This was about the time I took a class too, because we did a little hexi thing. A couple of the quilts in that book. And actually I have this rug drawn out. I've done part of it. It's huge. It doesn't show there, but it's like 45 inches long. If I finish that, it will be a celebration. But here's like a hexi table runner. They just did it all. I don't have this one dated. Primrose Garden. Either I just didn't. 2006, so we're up to 2006. Birds of a Feather. I think this is another one Livia showed. Another Kansas City Star book. You know, you could applique for a hundred years and not finish all of these beautiful quilts. I'm pretty sure this is one Olivia showed. I'm trying to find the main quilt. Here they are. Two different versions. 2006. <clears throat> Here's, this is 2007, Simply Vintage. Love that quilt on the front. Again, a lot of just floral applique quilts, but this one is spectacular. I love the flag, so pretty. Simply Vintage 2007. And there again, there's Punch Needle, there's Strawberries. Look at this one, all pieced. Just gorgeous. This was a little one that came out with a line of fabric, Chelsea's Boutiques, Chelsea's, Chelsea Boutique. This was three quilts. And this also went along with a line of fabric that they put out by Moda. I love this one. 2007 Rick Rack Garden is one of the ones that I have kitted. I won't get it out, but I'll show you real quick. Here's one of the blocks from Rick Rack Garden. So yeah, I have a lot of applique in my future. But these are just fabulous. This, these are like almost like a these I can't say star books are almost like coffee table books. I mean, look at this. And now you see why I love that primitive with a flare of pretty. 2008 in full bloom. Another one with beautiful applique. Are you overwhelmed yet? <laughs> I am. There's two pretty quilts in here. So, and like I said, each one of these, there's some rug hooking, there's some embroidery, there's a little bit of everything. This is one of my very favorites, When the Cold Wind Blows. And this one, I love this quilt with those baskets in the Halloween colors. I want to say Susan Aki did that one. But I can't swear to it. Oh, yeah. I already have the template drawn. 
I had high hopes. Okay, I think I have this one kitted with fabric from there, so let me look real quick, because I have some of these in these plastic bins. That's Rick Rec Garden. So these are the fabrics from that. There's the border. What you want to say surrounded by fabric and I know you're thinking well, which ones have you done <laughs> this is love letters from cold wind blows is that the one I was working I don't know so this one I have three backgrounds the reds the browns The blue greens. It's all ready. Is that the one that was talking about? Yeah. So that is for this quilt, those fabrics. Let's see if I can find the whole quilt. This is where they're on the inside. I should start this one. How beautiful is that? And it has three different backgrounds. Some of these I had in there with the um, fabric, the books, and then I had to go retrieve them. 2009, Halloween 1901. This one I have just about everything piece. So I have this many more of the st of the stars to do, and I have a lot of them finished. It takes a lot of them. This wasn't necessarily a line of their fabric. This is just. So these are all done. So, and I have all of the half square triangles finished. So I just need to finish sewing all the blocks together. And then I have, I don't know, maybe 10 more stars to applique and that'll be done. Two thousand ten garden club. Love this one. I don't think I have this one kitted. See, 2010 is when the store I worked in closed. So after that, I didn't have as much access to the fabrics. I think, I think uh, Olivia showed this. I think I remember her talking about that one, maybe. Sorry, Olivia, if I can't remember. Oh no, she talked about this one. So Olivia has a flip through of this and this is called Garden Club, 2010. This is 2010 also. See, by 2010 to 2015, they were really hot and heavy into cross stitch. This one I don't have kitted, but how gorgeous is this one? Look at this. The colors that they use are just fabulous. I think that's a mock-up. Just beautiful. This one's called Country Inn. Again, this is a Kansas City Star book. 
This is weekend, and I know Olivia went through this one because this, this is their blueberry crumble line, which I do have. This is 2013, another Kansas City Star book. This is called Tending the Garden. Is this someone I'm working on? I don't know. No, I don't think I'm working on that. <laughs> this is in the guard in the meadow. This is another one Olivia went through. Yeah, she went through this one. But I love all these birds. This is The Raven, 2016. They have since republished this one. And this one, I also have a kit. The only difference in my kit is the quilt here has like a tan plaid or check for the background. When I got mine, we only had the purple, but I don't think it makes a difference. So this is the fabrics that were used in that quilt. Okay, here's the next one, a little flower. And this is one that I have some of the blocks. Oh, is this it? Yes. I've worked on some of these blocks. A little flower. I'm getting a little slap happy here. A little flower. And I have that bird block finished. And a couple others that are ready to go. This one is partially done. One of the baskets. So these are smaller blocks. A little more doable. And the backgrounds are a couple different backgrounds. I have to figure out this one. Yeah, it's this one. This is called Fresh Picked. I don't know if anybody's shown this one yet or not. This one I have started and I just dropped one of the blocks that I've done. Hold on. So this one, I've done this block, and they're pretty big blocks, maybe like 30 inches. So that almost could be a standalone pillow, but I would like to do the whole quilt. And here's the next one that I'm working on that I've started. I know it looks goofy. But, um, and this one came out in 2017. I think this is one of the last books. So I'm doing this one. I think that one next. Yeah, because I've got the stems coming in. And then I'm just going to show you, what was this one? Oh, I already showed you that. Okay. Here's a couple of their different lines of fabric that I made smaller quilts. This one, can you see it? <laughs> I don't know what line that was, but this was made, this is a Miss Rosie pattern and it was made with charm scores, I believe. And then some yardage. Here's another one that was I did long time ago, but another Miss Rosie pattern, but all Blackbird fabrics. I have other ones too that are bigger. And then I thought I'd show you a couple little things that they put out. Let's see if I can get to my, got myself in a jam here. <laughs> this was a piece 
that we did at a retreat. They came to Jacksonville one time. To the store where I worked. And we made this little wool piece. And I really have it just about finished. I just need to applique the, the linen onto the background. I'm not sure how I'll finish it. I think I'll just make it a, put some fabric on the back and call it a day. And there again, that was just hand stitched down. So that was a fun retreat. This is a little stitcher's journal they came out with. And it has lots of different, it's all black and white, but it has pages to write in. It has some pictures of some of their quilt patterns. A bed without a quilt is like a sky without the stars. Aww. So that's just a fun little journal they made. This is one of their standalone patterns, Flesh, Fresh Bloom. I had that kitted for a while and then I unkitted it. This is also by the Kansas City Star. This one was one that came out with um, a line of fabric that was called Autumn Fair. I think, no, Antique Fair. I think that's what I did that one small quilt out of antique fair and then in 2002 2003 there's three rug hooking books that they came out with if you're into rug hooking some are pieces are small a lot of them mirrored um, some of the designs in their quilts. This was called the Simple Life Rugs. Who doesn't need chickens? I guess they're roosters, I don't know. I told you I don't know my animals. <laughs> There's a little barn scene, American Farm. And then this one was in Praise of Autumn. 2003, again, all rugs. That's my collection. <laughs> yes, I have a lot I could work on. <laughs> Instead, I sit at night and I cross stitch, but I have been piecing a little bit lately. So um, I know this was a lot. A lot of people will probably give up on it way before it's finished, <laughs> and that's fine. Um, I just give all the high praise to um, Blackbird Designs. They are extremely creative. Their lines of fabric are still sought after. All of their books are still sought after. And um, in talking with a very good source, they are going to have out another line of fabric through Moda. Don't ask me when, I have no idea, but I know that they have committed to do a line of fabric with um, Moda. So hopefully it will have sampler fabric because that is one of the things that has been coveted by a lot of people for project bags, for quilts, for a lot of different things. So we'll see. As far as any new books, I don't know. I just hope that they're continuing to reprint some of these that I've shown you because they're fabulous. So now I'm gonna take the rest of the day and clean up my mess. <laughs> And I'm gonna leave out some of these ones that I really wanna work on because some of them are fabulous and especially the ones that have already started. So um, I also did the Halloween one that some people have done. I forgot to talk about that and it's right here on the back of the chair. This one I did not hand applique because I had to do it for a store sample quickly. So I know I've shown this before but this is the one that has the huge house, the cat in the moon. I'll just show you the middle of it with that. Can you see that? Yep. 
So I get that out every fall. Okay, I will let you go. And I hope this doesn't take a hundred years to upload. My poor husband has been struggling lately because we've, it's just been some technical issues. So last time part of it uploaded and not the rest. And I got messages, where are you? You dropped off the face of the earth. So anyway, hopefully it'll all work out because I don't like to see him get stressed about my floss tube. So quilty tube, whatever. So I'm going to encourage you if you are working on any Blackbird pieces to hashtag BBDQAL and post on whether it's Facebook or um, Instagram because Lori Textilist and Olivia B are both um, commandeering that and I think it's gonna be great. So um, if you're quilting and doing anything that comes from any of these books or using Blackbird fabric, make sure that you use that hashtag. So I am finished. I will be back if you're lucky, <laughs> not you're lucky, if I'm lucky in two weeks because um, I, I think I'm beginning to show you my entire stock of everything. So the next one I might, might, don't hold me to it, might have a little tour of my sewing room. It's small, it's crowded, but it's where I love to sit and stitch or sew. So anyway, love ya. Have a great week. Bye.